Dr. Paul Williams to move the motion. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. I beg to move that this House has considered democracy in Uganda. Serious concerns have been raised internationally about the Ugandan government systematically undermining democracy in their country. MPs have been arrested. Institutions that should protect the democratic rights of citizens are being weakened and the voices of ordinary Ugandans are being ignored. The United Kingdom is a friend of Uganda. We are important partners in trade, in development, in security. And, Madam Chair, I am a friend of Uganda too. Uganda and the UK have a shared past, and I hope we will have a strong and prosperous shared future together too. But at the start of this debate today, it's important to ask what is the UK's interest in Uganda and whether that gives us a legitimate right to make any comment about its democracy. I firmly believe that Uganda should be valued as an equal partner to the UK. But it hasn't always been an equal partnership. Our relationship began in 1894. Until 1962, Uganda what was what was known then as a British protectorate. Now, Uganda is an independent, sovereign nation, and it has been throughout my lifetime. It has a constitution that describes a balance of power between an executive, a legislature, and other independent bodies. I respect the Ugandan constitution. It's right for Uganda, and it's right for the Ugandan people. That constitution protects the Ugandan people. It's the rock on which Ugandan democracy is built. And the relationship between our two countries should always respect the Ugandan constitution. I will give one. President Museveni has been in power for 33 years this month. Three quarters of people in the country haven't ever lived under a different leader. The Ugandan people can see that the institutions of their democracy are slowly being eroded. Firstly, the government has closed down critical media outlets. There are credible reports that television stations were interrupted during the 2016 elections when results were being reported that favoured the opposition. There are also credible reports that social media, including Facebook and Twitter, is shut down by the government during sensitive times. Secondly, the government has used the military, the military, to attack Parliament. When MPs were debating the extension of presidential term limits, Parliament was attacked and MPs, including Betty Nambuze, were beaten by armed forces. Thirdly, there's evidence of serious human rights abuses. There are serious and credible reports about an attack in Kisesi on the palace of King Charles Muberi in 2016 and the massacre of 150 civilians by Ugandan forces. According to these reports, the soldier who led this attack has been promoted and no independent investigation has taken place. Hopefully the minister will give the government's position on this attack. Fourthly, elections have been described in diplomatic language as being short of being free and fair. Serious allegations have been made about the conduct of elections in Uganda over many years, but the most recent EU report on the 2016 presidential election made 30 recommendations that should be enacted before the next election which happens in 2021. Now, there are many, many Ugandan opposition politicians who've struggled bravely to use the democratic process to win power. There isn't time to mention all of them here, but I'd like to draw attention to two people. Kiza Besige has stood for president on three occasions. He's been arrested, beaten, and harassed so many times that he's lost count. I had the pleasure of meeting Dr. Besige when he visited our parliament last year. His sacrifices in the pursuit of democracy in Uganda should be lauded. And I also want to mention Robert Chagilani, also known as Bobby Wine. Chagilani is a young, charismatic musician with a large popular following who was elected to the Ugandan parliament around the same time that I was elected to the UK parliament. But while I get to, in a friendly way, be critical of the government without harassment, Bobby has been the target of totally undemocratic behaviour by his. In August of last year, he 
and four other MPs were arrested by the military whilst campaigning at a by-election. His driver was shot dead. He was severely beaten by soldiers before being brought to court on trumped-up charges that were later dropped. Bobby Wine was eventually handed over to police and released. But this is just another example of the Ugandan government using the military to prevent democratically elected politicians doing their job. Uh, the question is that this House has considered democracy in Uganda. Pauline Latham.